I'm going to be showing you the inside of one of the projects that I put together. This is basically the Anything Light. This light is designed to be both a prototype and development tool, um, as well as an art piece to keep me uh, up to date and uh, skilled at what I do as a lighting designer and developer. Um, I also use this as a flashlight on occasion. Uh, some of the features from the outside before I open it up. Um, the sliding hardcover I made from a flip phone. Uh, the inside has a set of uh, mouse switches underneath here, uh, and then a row of dips. It also has the indicator to tell you that there is power in there, um, the high modes, and the low modes, and off. Also has two 15 millimeter fans in there. Um, has the output for the lasers. Has a 7 to 40 volt charger that uses a 5 millimeter plug, and it has the USB uh, mini. Um, plug here. Um, from the top side, some of the things that it does is uh, on the low mode settings, uh, you can see the ring here. Uh, the outer ring does a lot of different effects and stuff like that. Uh, if I switch it to the internal mode, uh, high modes, uh, you'll see the internal LEDs come on. They're far a bit brighter and have an array of colors as well as there being the different color lasers that are in there. Um, oh, holding it backwards, it doesn't help anything. Alright, the different color lasers that are in there, uh, which is really cool too. Um, basically I'm taking this apart because those need to be realigned. So, let's open it up. There are a couple of top screws uh, that need to be done. Well, actually before I take those out, I'll show you some of the, uh, some of the other things. I'll pull this ring off, and this ring was probably the hardest thing to do. Uh, a lot of the development pictures are on my business page on Facebook. You can follow that, www.facebook.com slash nightcloudindependent. One word. A lot of the pictures from my laser shows uh, and other projects are on there. If you have any questions or just want to know more about some of the things that I've put together, uh, that can help you out. Also a good way to contact me. Uh, you can see the mini connector and all the wires in there. Uh, there are pictures of that whole thing being put together. Several LEDs on the side also. That was probably the hardest thing to do in the entire uh, light. Very lightweight ring. Uh, it all docks into this mini connector right here. I'm going to continue pulling out the four screws on the top. Uh, the LEDs are all housed in a heat sink in here. I have four white LEDs. I uh, can see two here and two here, followed by two on each side of uh, the ultraviolet, and then on the middle, eight uh, RGB three watt LED beads. Come on. I think some of this needs to be re glued too. All right. On the bottom side, uh, you'll see that I have a docking port that docks into this area here. Um, all my little wires and stuff like that, my screws to hold on the heat sink. Uh, you'll see two cutouts here. Uh, you'll notice they're kind of clear. Uh, what those two cutouts do is they blow air from the fans up and through these slitted entryways, uh, which help cool down the LEDs for the continuous use feature of this light. Uh, it's about 30 watts of output power, if not more, uh, when in full use. And it can be connected to an external power source, which gives it almost infinite battery life, or infinite use life. Um, there's the two 50 millimeter fans in there. Uh, they're rated at 5 volts. The battery in here is a 3.7, so I used a step-up driver from a, a UV laser, 405 laser, which uses 5 volts. And I have my little mini plug right there, which I'll pop out. And that frees up that connection, as you see there. Um, actually, it used to be glued down at one point. I guess it's not anymore. There's the iPhone 4 uh, high-capacity battery with the, um, the protection circuit and everything removed out of it. Uh, that's been replaced by another charging component. Uh, we have a cold cathode fluorescent connector. Yeah, I love these connectors. I use them because they're high uh, voltage and heat resistant. There's a couple of outside case screws uh, to pull this piece up and out. 
and uh, I'll undo those. Those case screws are holding by bolts. And I'm not going to take them out all the way because they don't need to be pulled out all the way. Just some of the way. And there's another one here. The design of this is overall probably one of my best designs for a portable light. I really enjoy putting this together. It took a little bit of time. Uh, it took a little bit of effort. But uh, all good things are like that. No, no, that one doesn't need to come out. All right, now this plate gets pulled out even more. Uh, this connector gets pulled out here, which frees up the power from the battery and several other things, such as the other laser assemblies out. And this gets pulled up and out, uh, which exposes the lasers that I have in there and this direct head assembly which I guess is directly soldered. I forgot all about that. Look at that, there's a surprise in every corner. Hmm. Well, so much for things I forgot I did. Um, the base of the connector right here is for the uh, high and low power settings and here I got my 405 uh, nanometer laser, my 445 or 455 blue, um, my 200 milliwatt 532 nanometer green, and my red. And those, uh, well, those are lasers. Uh, fun stuff. Uh, let's see, I find an external battery. That way, I don't have to plug this in and show you. I'll plug this in. Alright, and then I'll show you some of the lasers. So, all my lasers and my mixing dichros here. Yes, no. Dead battery, I guess. Oh, wait, that's unplugged. Yes, this thing is rather complicated. Annoyingly so sometimes. this back in. The blue, a little bit harder to turn on. Uh, there are all the lasers and they come out and make a nice white light. As I said, some of them are out of alignment, but you get about a watt of power out of it. Also set your laser colors. So overall, a fun laser device. And then uh, I've got all my little laser drivers underneath. Pull the power and show ya. It's all a custom arrangement that I did. See all the uh, drivers that are stacked inside of there. As I said, development pictures can be found um, on my Facebook site, and uh, I'll include that in the description. But this has been one of my more complicated projects. Um, if you have any questions about working on things like this, uh, as I said, the best way to contact me is through there. I don't really get much time to check over my YouTube the way I want to, so sorry about that. Anyway, I'm going to get to work with aligning this. Hope you enjoyed a little insight on some of my more complicated projects.